Welcome to Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking features delicious recipes and cooking tips from the Gulf Coast's finest chefs and restaurants. Watch as popular local chefs prepare their special dishes with natural gas. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, provider of clean, efficient, natural gas. We are bringing you Coastal Cooking today from the beautiful model home built by Classic Homes of Pensacola in the Huntington Creek subdivision. My guest chef today is culinary instructor Kat McCreary from Pensacola Cook's Kitchen. We are so glad to have you. Well, I'm so thrilled to be here. We've got some great recipes, but we before do. we begin, I want to introduce Rick Payshawn, who along with his partner, Danny Speranzo, is right. the builder of this beautiful home. Rick, Thank you. you have done such a beautiful job. Tell our viewers about Huntington Creek, beautiful subdivision. Well, Huntington Creek is a very, uh, not a very real large subdivision, but very intimate. And uh, it's 143 lots located on the west side of Pensacola, near uh, Nature Trail subdivision, mm -hmm. off of Mobile Highway, immediately west of the Equestrian Center. And uh, we're very excited to have this. It's been in the parade, the parade main site for two years yes. in a row. Yes. And we're looking forward to maybe doing it again next year. So Great. I kind of spoke that out of turn. I should have said that. But <laughs> we'll anyhow. look forward to that. But this is an all gas home. All gas. I and mean, a lot of your customers want that gas, don't they? Especially yeah. for cooking. When you like to eat, you like to cook. That's when you right. you cook, you like to eat. That's, That's right. right. And it doesn't, it doesn't do better than on natural gas, right? No, natural gas is great. Okay. Well, listen, stick around. We've got a great meal that'll be ready in, in a little bit, okay? Looking forward to it. Okay. Thanks. We're going to get started, Kat. You. And you've okay. got a special dessert for us that um, is quite unique. It's banana ice cream. It's banana ice cream and the recipes that I am preparing for you today I tried to be very thoughtful and mindful to hey we're all looking for good alternatives mm -hmm. right it's summertime we want to lighten things up we want things to be fresh and in the moment and we want to be able to prepare them quickly and serve really tasty food to our guests and to our family mm -hmm. so I'm making a real treat and it is um, instead of using dairy we're gonna be using some other ingredients and frozen bananas is our number one ingredient. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my frozen bananas in there. Real important that you peel your bananas ahead of time and cut them into small pieces and mm -hmm. put them in the freezer. And you wanna do that at least three hours in advance um, okay. to preparing this. Okay, so then my next ingredients that are gonna go in, I love, love, love coconut milk. Oh. Huge fan of coconut milk. It has so many helpful benefits and it's a great replacement to dairy. Mm -hmm. um, so what I like to do is I like to get it a little bit separated so I chill it so I can get that nice solid part of the coconut milk mm -hmm. out. And sometimes it agrees with me and sometimes it doesn't, <laughs> disagree. it doesn't agree with me. But I like to get it so that there's a separation between those two because when you use that nice thick part, not only are you getting all of the helpful benefits, but you're also getting that texture that we all want from yes. ice cream. Yes, and look how easy this is uh -huh. just to do in a food processor. Yep. You just don't need in a food ice cream processor, machine. You don't need anything. all that fancy equipment, no way. So then I have all of the really liquid part left, and I'm just going to set that over in the sink. All right. Now, do you want your bananas to be really ripe? Yeah, you want them really ripe. Okay. You want them really at the peak of flavor. Because that's the ta that's when they're really the tastiest. Mm -hmm. for that's something when they're like the tastiest. This. Yeah, and that's when their sugar content is also mm. the highest. Another ingredient that I'm using here today is something y'all may not be familiar with, but it's called agave five. And I'm always looking for a way to cut a little bit more sugar out of my diet. Um, me personally, um, I, I prefer things that give me alternatives to sugar. This is sweetened with stevia and monk fruit. So oh. it has two very natural sweeteners as opposed to an artificial sweetener. And it's um, agave from the agave plant with stevia and monk fruit. And so I'm just gonna give us just a little additional sweetening there. This is a great product. So I just did basically a little over a teaspoon there. Mm -hmm. And then we want vanilla. If you don't have the agave, do you recommend another yes, substitute? Yes, absolutely. Maple syrup is a wonderful okay. substitute. Um, so we want a little vanilla in there. And then I have brought another treat called cacao. And cacao is the most natural state that we can purchase chocolate in. So this is the closest thing to real chocolate off the tree. 
And so I'm going to put a little bit in there, and then I'm going to save a little bit, and we're going to make a special topping for this, okay? Okay. Okay. So here we go. We're going to whip this up. This couldn't be any easier. Couldn't be any easier. And I have some, um, and it is done. I'm going to get That's it. Wow. I know. Now, this is more like a soft serve ice cream. Mm -hmm. So, if you don't mind, I'm going to sure. have you hand me, um, and we're oh, going to make a look, little topping to go on it. So, you can it, use decorative. Elegant way yeah. to serve this. So, you can use some decorative cups if you would like. So, this is fun to me. I like to do this. And so you can I'm just see the little these. speckles of the mm -hmm. uh, chocolate in there. Yep. And we kept our banana. See how much texture we have in there? Mm -hmm. We still have a lot of texture in there with the bananas. So you don't want to whip it? Yeah, you and, and everybody has their own way that they like to do things, mm -hmm. and every family has their, you know, some people like a texture like this, some people like a texture like that. I like this like texture. You I can like see this the texture bananas. too. And then I'm going to show you all this topping, and you can do a multitude of toppings, but everybody knows that a little bit of salt always brings out the best sweet, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm using a little bit of pink Himalayan oh. salt, and then I have some pistachios, which I love. You can do any kind of nuts or seeds that you want. If you don't want to do nuts and you want to mm -hmm. do seeds. So I just do a little sprinkle of the salt. And then I'm going to add in a little bit of that cacao. And then that my last little sweetener in this is going to be the second portion of the agave. The original recipe um, did call for the maple syrup. So this is a substitute, so okay. you can definitely do the maple syrup, which has many, many, many helpful benefits. Did you know that maple syrup has 54 essential minerals? No. Yeah, 54 essential minerals. So by all means, it is a very, very, very healthy mm -hmm. food. But for those of us that are just looking for a little substitute without the sugar, this is a good one. So see, you can make Perfect this really topping. nice and elegant. So we're just gonna have a nice little topping to that. Just give us that little extra bump of flavor in there. And I'm gonna put these straight in the freezer until we're ready to serve. Okay. We want them chilled. That is beautiful. So Look there we go. Elegant. Now that, that looks. could not be when you have taken the meat off the grill and you are letting it rest before when you before you serve your guest. You can just beautiful. and I'm gonna ask you if you don't mind opening up that freezer drawer for me. And Kat, um, how long can you keep this ice cream in the refrigerator? Well, in my house, it doesn't last more than a day. <laughs> there you go. But I do have friends that like to make multiple batches of it. Mm -hmm. And they said that they have been able to keep it from event to event for about a month. Oh, okay. Yeah, and another Perfect. real good tip is when you go to serve it for the second time, it's really nice to freeze it in a nice glass container mm -hmm. and then dip your ice cream server in hot water and then you just scoop out your individual servings and it comes right out just like that. Great tip. Yeah. So the next dish that I'm going to do, we're going to do a sriracha shrimp with a mango avocado salsa. Okay. And the combination of those flavors, you get a little heat from the sriracha, you get the creaminess of the avocado and the sweetness mm. of the mango, just a fresh summer great dish. And we are going to be serving them on something other than a bread product. We're going to be serving them actually on a leaf. I know. Yeah. Why do you so, see this? Okay, so for our marinade, we're going to get this marinating now, so we'll mm -hmm. have time for our flavors to marry together a little bit. Okay, so I have just some really nice uh, peeled into vein shrimp, mm -hmm. about 35 count, 25, 35 shrimp, which is a great size to work with. Um, and of course, our citrus is our acid, and our acid is a real important ingredient in getting this marinated. And you've chosen lime? Mm hmm I love, love, love mm -hmm. lime. I love those flavors because our spices are gonna be, our aromatic uh, are gonna be our cumin and oh. freshly ground coriander. So coriander straight from the garden. Mm -hmm. So the cilantro was grown in the garden, then the coriander, when it went to seed, was harvested as seeds. We're gonna use that fresh coriander that came from the garden Wow. And that's going to be, yep. Yeah. So I'm going to do one whole lime. And I love this. So I'm a kitchen gadget girl, if you can't tell. 
I didn't bring the whole kitchen well, sink. Well, you know, as long as you use them, that's great. Yeah. You know, I've got some that I haven't used, I hate to admit, or don't use that often, but they sure come in handy, don't yeah. they? So I'm going to divide up my red onion that I'm using mm -hmm. for the salsa as well. So we're going to get a little red onion in the marinade oh. as well so that when we cook our shrimp, we have a little bit of the onion sitting mm -hmm. in that flavor. And how long will this need to set up? Um, if we can give it about 20 minutes, that'll be oh, perfect. Okay. You know, it doesn't need, because we have acid in it, you want to be very careful because acid is a form of cooking. Yes. So when you marinate right. an acid, you actually start the clock on cooking, mm -hmm. on your cook time. That's important so you to want remember. To, mm -hmm, so 20 minutes on this marinade. And like I said, I tried to be mindful of dishes that were really yeah. quick and easy to prepare, full of flavor. Oh, yeah. Full of top of the season flavor. So I have a little spice blend here. And this is cumin, a little red pepper flake, a little bit of black pepper, and um, some pink Himalayan salt. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna give that a little mix. And then I wanted to show y'all in my spice grinder. And I love, like I said, I'm a kitchen gadget girl. I have one of these just for coffee, but I have one for cooking. Very and I good. use a lot, I use this a lot. I ground the cacao for the ice cream mm -hmm. was ground in there. The pistachios were ground in here and now the coriander, but this is the coriander fresh out of the garden. So we're just gonna give that a quick whip. And that will just turn that into a powder. So we're going to use a little coriander in our marinade, and then we're going to use a little um, in our dish. Okay. So it's not just for coffee, Glenn. Not just for coffee. And this is really fresh coriander, so it's taking a little longer. These are green coriander seeds. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit of the coriander in here as well. We're talking about flavor. Mm -hmm. This is going to be chock full yep. of it. And that's all there is, and then this goes and in the refrigerator. And that's all there is to it, and then Perfect. this goes in the refrigerator. We're going to take a break right here. Okay. And we'll uh, start uh, our other two dishes when we come back. So stay with us. We'll be right back after these messages. Heat pumps don't pump much heat. In fact, heat from an efficient natural gas heater can be 30% warmer, and you can get up to an $800 rebate when you install one. Warming up to natural gas yet? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Welcome back. We are ready to start uh, the salsa that's going to complement our sriracha shrimp. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I chose to do a mango and avocado salsa because you just get that wonderful creaminess of the avocado and the sweetness of the mango and the spiciness of the sriracha. And it's wonderful. I'm using a paring knife and people often ask me, how do you work with a mango? It just slips and slides everywhere. If you have a good sharp paring knife, that will be your secret. Mm -hmm. So that's what I chose to use. And then I just cut thin, thin, thin lines in my mango. It's got a very long seed, doesn't it? Has it has a very long seed. A very there big are, seed. They're big seeds. There mm -hmm. are different things you can buy on the market that um, they sell that say that this is the latest, greatest way to do a mango. I've just found the old fashioned way with a paring knife works the best for me. So I just cut it in segments and then I'm gonna fillet it off of that seed. So I'm actually gonna start at the end and I'm gonna fillet my way up. You kinda of gotta feel where you are. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful avocado too, Kat. Thank you. Well, it is avocado season and boy, they are delicious right now. Mm -hmm. They couldn't be any better. So we're doing about, I do about the same uh, ratio. So whatever size avocado I have, I like to get my mango to be about exactly the same. Okay. So that's gonna be a good amount of mango for us right there, okay? So we'll just put that mango to the side. And then the next ingredient that we're gonna have going in is our acid, which is very important. And again, I chose a lime just because the flavors marry mm -hmm. so beautifully together. So I just good. love lime with avocado mm -hmm. and really help balance out that mango as well. Of course, my little citrus press that I couldn't live without. It also keeps the seeds. Yes. Yeah, so you don't get yes. any seeds in your dish, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Great gadget to have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and there it gets every one. bit of that juice. Every bit of that juice. You have nothing that goes to waste. Okay. And there's number oh, two. Good. Okay. And then we're going to chop up a little cilantro. Did you know? that when you're using cilantro, the stems are just as flavorful as the leaves. So yeah. you can save a lot of time in your kitchen. You don't even have to um, strip that cilantro, those leaves away. You can just process those leaves 
and the stems right in there together, they have the same flavor. I didn't know that. Unlike parsley. Parsley, it's two different flavors. Oh. One is bitter and one is not. So okay. with parsley. So we just want about two tablespoons of that cilantro. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna get it over here and give it a little, little bit of a finer chop before I throw that in there. So we have our two tablespoons of cilantro and then our seasonings are just gonna bring all mm -hmm. those flavors together. So what I've done is I went ahead and um, pre-blended mm -hmm. and did some the same thing, the cumin, the Himalayan salt, the red pepper flakes and the pepper. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of my this goes coriander. Together quickly too. Very quickly. All of these are designed with really quick, friendly, mm -hmm. um, family and friend entertaining in mind. So see how beautiful our salsa is? That's gonna be so delicious with that shrimp. Oh my goodness, the aroma is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna put that in the refrigerator and just let those flavors marry together while we mm -hmm. finish up the rest of our meal. Okay. Okay. Um, and we want to talk about Pensacola Cook's Kitchen and what all you've got going over there. And I can tell you are a culinary instructor. Yes, ma'am. Because, I am. you know, you have, um, just watching you on the show here, you know, you, you have such a wonderful presence and a great way of communicating. Well, thank you. Uh, simple ways to cook. Well, I absolutely love being a culinary instructor at Pensacola Cook's, and I have been for quite a few number of years. Um, there are a lot of great things going on at Pensacola Cooks right now. Uh, they're growing mm -hmm. and literally growing. So Pensacola Cooks has taken over the nursery um, property that's right next door to their buildings. On Barrancas. So, on Barrancas. Mm -hmm. So on Barrancas, where Pensacola Cooks stands, they have taken over the plant nursery mm -hmm. and they're going to be growing and a goal of sustainability for their kitchen and for their incubators as part of the goal of having the garden, but they're also gonna make it a wonderful venue site for all the folks in Pensacola. Oh. So keep an eye out for what's coming. Jackie and Mike Selby have done a great job. They have done a fantastic job. And you teach uh, culinary classes there? Yes, ma'am, I do, I teach culinary classes. So um, my classes are from the garden with cats. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're gonna start those back up again in August. So y'all be looking for the August calendar of Pensacola Cook's Kitchen. It'll be the third Monday in August. Perfect. And we will have a bountiful harvest. Oh, well all of these time. foods come from your garden. We're gonna talk about that. But right now we are starting a cucumber soup. We are, we're starting a cucumber avocado soup, which I absolutely love. A chilled soup is so refreshing in the summer. Mm -hmm. It is just delicious and cucumbers, are one of those things that will just bring us back to hydration in a heartbeat. So if you are out in the sun or you're dehydrated, a cucumber can be your very best friend. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just getting the cucumber and the avocado in there together. And instead of using a heavy cream, which tradi traditionally this recipe would have called for, I've chosen to use a non-fat Greek yogurt. Which I really like the tang. It mm -hmm. has a tanginess to it. And the texture. It. And good. the texture. So this again is another just easy, easy peasy, good summer. Um, you can almost do this as a side mm -hmm. dish. Some people love it as a dip. Use it mm -hmm. as a dip. Oh, that'd be a good um, idea. Very refreshing. Mm -hmm. though. Yep. And we also have a lot of fresh herbs that came straight out of the garden that'll mm -hmm. get incorporated in this dish. You are an organic heirloom specialist. Yes ma'am, I, gr I grow all heirlooms. Heirlooms are what I prefer to grow. I love the act of preservation. Mm -hmm. um, I love being a part of a movement that is um, keeping our southern food supply and our old varieties because we've lost a lot of our old varieties. Really? So I grow a lot of varieties that had once been grown by our grandparents and you can't find readily available in our food supply anymore. So it's very, very rewarding, and it's rewarding to bring the mm -hmm. past back for people. People will say, oh, I remember my grandmother grew mm -hmm. that kind of deal in her garden. I haven't seen it since. Aww. And uh, this type of deal is called bouquet, and it literally mm -hmm. will grow taller than you. And it loves the South, and it's a beautiful, beautiful deal. And unfortunately, it just isn't what's commercially available anymore. Aww. So well, that's wonderful um, that you are that you're doing that. Yeah, so what I like to do, I have my three main ingredients in here now, and mm -hmm. I like to just kind of marry and blend those things together texturally. This soup just whips up in a heartbeat, but we're just gonna... So we're just gonna work these down real quick. Mm -hmm. 
And of course you serve this chilled. Chilled, mm -hmm. yep. So um, this is something that's great to be able to make ahead. I'm gonna take this, this guy out and give him a little cut. Um, so this is great to be able to make ahead. And the flavors are just wonderful. And the good thing about this is, is that the cucumbers and the avocado and the Greek yogurt offer a canvas. You can make this in a lot of different flavor profiles. You could make this Indian by using curry seasoning. Um, okay. You can make it any flavor profile that you like. So this is dill? This is dill, fresh from the garden. You can smell that, oh, and a wonderful it is. smell. So what I'm doing is, I, is I've gotten my processing going on my texture here. So then as I cut these up, and the reason that I'm doing that is I want my aromatics, my dill and my lemon thyme to hold the integrity of their shape and structure and fragrance as well. So since I pretty much have already blended my soup, mm -hmm. this is just kind of almost adding it in at the end. So I'm just cutting up, and the great thing about lemon thyme that I love is that you don't have any hard stems to deal with, so you can just cut that into smaller pieces. It's almost like a little flower. So smell that. When I say lemon mm. thyme, it is lemon it thyme. Is, it, it gives you very, a wonderful... Um, fragrant. Mm-hmm. Very I fragrant. Love that. Lemon thyme is just such a compliment, especially mm -hmm. here with coastal cuisine. Yes. We have so much wonderful seafood and fish and things like that. And Good it's compliment just a, to that. It's a great compliment. So then again, what we're going to do is we're going to add in our citrus. And we're just going to do that straight into the bowl. I'm going to take out any visible seeds mm -hmm. that I see. We'll just take that straight out. Yeah, things are really hopping at Pensacola Cooks. The kitchen is busy all the time. It's such a popular lunch spot. It if you is. haven't eaten there, um, it is just, Chef Frank does such a wonderful job. And it's almost like being in Mayberry, it sitting is. at the lunch counter. And you, you, you get to it. interact with the chefs and the people, the patrons that are there mm -hmm. just cherish Pensacola Cook's Kitchen, they just love it. And uh, also the kids' camps are in full That's swing right, right now. That's what I was going to ask about. Yeah. Those are going on. You've so got the kids classes camps are going, going on. on. You've got an incubator kitchen. Tell every, our viewers what that is. Yeah, the incubator kitchen, they're, um, an incubator kitchen allows a culinary entrepreneur mm -hmm. the opportunity to provide their product without the expense of having to have their own commercial kitchen. So the Selbys have an incubator kitchen opportunity for food entrepreneurs to come mm -hmm. in and operate under their permitting and licensing, which is huge. It um, is. So it gives the whole culinary community an opportunity mm -hmm. to express their art and bring mm -hmm. more to our community in Pensacola food-wise. It's great. You know what? Let's take a commercial break uh -huh. here. We'll finish this up and have it ready for you when we get back. Stay with us. Cooking with natural gas is more controlled than using an electric range. But more importantly, they're less expensive to operate. Don't get burned with electric. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. If you would like written copies of today's recipes, you can call Pensacola Energy at 436-5050, or you can visit our website at www.coastalcooking.com. We are ready to enjoy this delicious meal, cat. Look at our shrimp sriracha with the mango avocado salsa, and I love the presentation. Thank you so much. Well, this was a surprise. This is actually Malabar spinach, and it loves Pensacola, Florida. It grows through the summer. It's a tropical plant originating in the Philippines. So this is a tasty, tasty alternative to serving it with bread. And it's beautiful. So it's keeping it nice and light, summer fare, absolutely beautiful. These leaves are so sturdy, you can just pick them right up and serve. And you can eat this. So, oh, you know, absolutely. You're, you're not so we just sauteed off the shrimp while anything. we were away. And uh, this is growing at the Pensacola Cook's Garden right now as we speak. Mm -hmm. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. Look so at there's that. our first course. And then... Rick, are you hungry? I'm starving. <laughs> well, we've got a, <laughs> we've got some great food. And look at our avocado soup. Ooh. And what is the garnish? This, this is fresh from the garden as well. This is the bouquet dill. Oh and some fresh onion chives and dusted with the ground coriander. Oh. So all of this is garden fresh and the cucumbers were grown in the kitchen as well. Beautiful. And to top this meal off, look at our banana ice cream. Oh, yes. Wow, we are in for a treat today. Oh, that is lovely. Thank you so much, Kent. It's been my pleasure. Rick, we want to 
show everyone and talk about this beautiful outdoor kitchen that you include in a lot of your homes. It's a focal point for our homes because people like uh, leisure living at home. Mm -hmm. So the lanai area is very important to design as well as the interior kitchen. So the summer kitchens are a very big focal point for us in that we have a grill, we have outside uh, refrigerator, as well as a sink area. Yes. Of course you can add to that, but that's what we basically do mm -hmm. when people want that uh, added to their contracts. And I love it because you're cooking with natural gas, not only inside, but Absolutely. outside on your natural gas grill and this beautiful natural gas fireplace. This, this is usable all year long. Yes, that's, that's, you know, Pensacola has a pretty good season to enjoy mm -hmm. the outside without a lot of humidity. Yes. So we want to make sure it's an area that we can enjoy fully with the family. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a bar area on this deck. Yes, there is a bar area as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different things you can incorporate to the summer kitchen that we standardly do with most folks. Yeah. But uh, it's a real plus to have it at home. Absolutely. And you know, talking about enjoy football games, there you've you even go. got it rigged up for a TV. TV the location, fireplace. that's right. Beautiful. And uh, you can even add pools to these Pools, homes. enclosures. Uh, the lanai can be enclosed separately, or you can add a pool and put the enclosure around the entire area. So, I think you all have thought of everything. Well, we like uh, Pensacola lends <laughs> itself to this type of design. It certainly does. Sure. Now, how long have you and Danny, your partner, been together with Classic? Over 30 years. That's what wow. we claim, anyway. We've been a little together a little longer than that, but over 30 years 30 of building. 30 years, yeah. and you have gained quite a reputation of being some excellent builders here in this area. We've had a lot of fun, I'll say that. And you not only build in your subdivisions, but also off-site? We build scattered sites from Santa Rosa County to Foley, Alabama, mm -hmm. back to Pensacola. Okay. Well, you've got a great product, and we have thoroughly enjoyed this. And thank you for inviting us in to this beautiful home cat. You've loved it, haven't you? I have loved it. I have to tell you, I walked into the kitchen, never seen it before in my life, and I felt like I was kicking in my own kitchen. I was so comfortable <laughs> there in there. I yeah. didn't miss a beat. Yeah. yeah, very nice, very well designed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, folks can come out to Huntington Creek and take a look at this model anytime during the week, weekend. Yes, we're open seven days a week, 11 to 5.30. Mm -hmm. We'll stay open a little later if we need be to catch people after work, so just give us a call. Great. Good, good, good. And Kat, we want to everyone, all of our viewers to know where they can get information about Pensacola Cook's Kitchen. The Pensacola Cook's Kitchen um, Facebook page. So just go on to Facebook and like Pensacola Cook's Kitchen. You can find out all about our wonderful restaurant. It's open Tuesday through Friday, 1030 a.m. to 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, also about the incubator kitchen option. Also about all of the summer camps. The cooking classes are fantastic. So just a bounty of services that Pensacola Cooks provides to our community. Not only it's fun and educational, and it's entertaining. So it's all three wrapped into one. Yes. And well, without further ado, we are going to close the show so we can enjoy this delicious Chow meal. Down. Okay. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again next week with more Coastal Cooking. This has been Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, provider of clean, efficient, natural gas. Join us each Sunday at 6 p.m. for more Coastal Cooking.